Paid. All right, we're going to talk about incremental costs. Uh, a little bit of background, incremental costs. Some of the things, the terms you hear brought up when you hear talk about incremental costs are relevant data, uh, data that is uh, to be relevant and must differ between alternatives. So, in other words, you have to have a decision that there must be something different between the two alternatives. An example here is a um, you get two Happy Meals. And you're trying to decide which one to have, and Happy Meal A has Coke fries hamburger. B, Coke fries, cheeseburger, and figuring out which, uh, what data is relevant for a decision. Well, either way you're going to get the Coke and the fries, so the only thing that's really relevant is the hamburger cheeseburger. The Coke and fries are actually not relevant because either way you're getting those we're not saying that they don't exist. We're not saying we don't want to pay for them. We don't want them. We're just saying that for the decision, they're not relevant. Okay. A couple other types of costs. Some costs are historical costs that cannot be changed. These costs are never relevant. So historical costs, what you paid for something in the past, is not relevant. Because it can't be changed in the future. A machine that was purchased two years ago at a cost of $5,000. The $5,000 is not relevant for any future calculations because it cannot be changed. So, because it can't be changed, it's not going to be relevant. All right, opportunity costs. That's a benefit loss. When you make a decision, sometimes you have to give up another opportunity. For instance, to attend college, some students may give up a job opportunity. The opportunity cost of attending college is that you could be spending that same amount of time uh, working somewhere. Okay, turn to page one in your handout if you would. If you don't have the, the handout, you go ahead and print it off Blackboard. All right, first thing about the decision we're going to have is a special order decision. Special order decision is when you're making something, in this case windmills, and someone wants to get a special order, usually it's for a large quantity and it's for a good price. So in this case, a foreign company has asked for a special order of 5,000 units at a price of $15 each. So in other words, they're going to buy a lot of units, 5,000, but they, they're not going to pay a regular selling price of $20. They want to pay 15 And the question is, should we take it? Should we take it? So here's kind of the decision we're going to have here. We have option A and option B. Option A, we have the regular production, and we have a special order. Option B is we don't take the special order, so we just have a regular production. So you can see, kind of going back to our Happy Meal thing, that uh, the regular production is not relevant. We can just concentrate on the special order, because either way we're going to have a regular production. Okay, all right. So let's take a look here. We're going to see what our additional... sales are going to be if we take this special order. We're going to sell them 5,000 units at $15 each. So let's take a look here. We're going to also have a additional variable cost. And that's going to be 5000 at $13 each. So 65000 Now this work is a little bit tricky. The additional fixed costs. The 
the additional fixed costs are actually going to be zero. Think about our fixed costs. They are fixed. They don't change. So unless something is given to you in the problem that indicates there's going to be a change in the fixed cost, generally speaking, they're not going to change. So there would not be any additional fixed costs. In other words, there's not going to be any additional rent, for instance. Your landlord probably doesn't care too much whether you take the special order or not. They just want to see their rent check, and that check is not going to change. So because the fixed costs are going to change, the additional income in this case will be $10,000. So yes, we would want to accept the order. So we would take that order because we'd be $10,000 better off. All right, let's take a look at page two. You can try page two on your own if you want. Um, uh, the solution of this will be up momentarily. All right, on page two we have a very similar problem. So we're going to do the additional sales. The additional sales are going to be... They want 1,000 units. And they want a price of six dollars. So in other words, they, they don't want to pay our regular price of seven. They want to pay six dollars, and that's because they're making a large order, order of a thousand of them. Additional variable costs all right. Additional variable costs now. The real cost per unit is 350. However, a little bit different than page uh, one here. We're going to have one dollar per unit uh, will be incurred if the special order is taken. The shipping cost. So we're going to add a dollar to the 350. So we have a total of 450 here for our variable cost. Additional fixed costs. Well, they don't give us any indication here that um, anything has changed to the fixed cost, so that will be zero. General fixed costs do not change. So 6,500 minus 4,500 is 1,500 positive. So because it's going to add positive to our income, uh, $1,500, we would say yes. We would want to accept the order. So we'd be $1,500 better off to take the order. Those of you that had micro econ, this is similar to that. As long as you cover your variable costs, you'll produce. Same kind of idea. Okay, page three. Again, you can give it a shot on your own. Okay. Let's see what our additional sales for this special order. We're going to have 500 units at $10 each. So they're making a, a they want a, us to sell them 500 units, but they want a good price of $10 each, less than our normal $15. So our sales are going to go up by 5,000.
And now we gotta do the variable costs. The variable costs, we're gonna have the direct materials, direct labor, overhead. Now, there will be no additional selling expenses. So, we are not gonna have any additional selling expenses for this. So, we do not need the 150. So we're gonna add up the direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, all three of those together, add up to seven. So our additional variable costs are going to be seven dollars per unit. So in total for our additional variable costs, we're going to have five hundred times seven dollars and that's going to give us thirty five hundred Our additional fixed costs, now in this problem they don't tell us about any additional fixed costs, so because they don't tell us about any additional fixed costs, we're going to assume that they didn't go up, because in general fixed costs do not change. So we're going to get additional income if we take this special order. Fifteen hundred. So we want to take the special order. Uh, we say yes, the order doesn't want to be accepted because we would be $1,500 better off by accepting the special order. Okay, page four, you can give page four a shot. It, it, page four is actually fairly difficult. There's a few hoops to jump through on that page. That's about as complex as we're going to get with it. Okay. Same as we've been doing. Ignore that cat in the background. Oofy cunt. No, no, not now, honey. We have a thousand units at ten dollars each. So again, they they want a, a price of ten dollars each. They want to order a lot of units, and but they want want to better than a normal price of $16 per reporter. Well, we have to figure out how much it is per unit for these variable costs. So we can use the regular production totals if we just divide it by the regular production in putters to figure out how much it is per unit. So if direct materials are $50,000 and that's for 10,000 putters, that must mean that each putter costs $5 each. And the direct labor twenty thousand dollars for the ten thousand putters so we have two dollars each and twelve thousand dollars by ten thousand equals a dollar twenty all 
All right, so this would equal $8.20. That would be our total variable cost for each uh, additional unit. And we don't have to worry about the sales commission because there are no additional selling expenses. So we can ignore that $1.60 that you see in the, oh, the second paragraph there. So our additional variable cost will be 8200 And normally we would not have any additional fixed costs. However, we're told that fixed cost increases from 15000 to 18000 So we're going to see how much is going to increase. Subtract eighteen thousand from excuse me, subtract fifteen thousand from the eighteen thousand, and so it's going to increase by three thousand dollars. It could be for additional setups or whatever it's for, but it increased by a total of three thousand dollars. So in this case, we do have additional fixed costs. The fixed costs changed, so they're relevant. So we're going to have an additional 3000 of fixed costs. So we will have additional income Of negative 1200 so in other words we would be losing $1,200 on this order so no oops that's no uh, order should not be accepted so we don't want to accept a special order because we'd be losing $1,200 on it.